Uh, let's welcome in Barbara Fuller. Barbara is a candidate for the 98th House of Delegates District seat. This is the seat currently held by Delegate Paul Espinosa. Paul is running for state senate in the seat currently held by Senator Patricia Rucker. So that creates an opening there. And Barbara has filed her name uh, pre-candidacy as a candidate. Barbara, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Uh, thank you for having me on. Yes, to answer your question or your statement, uh, I am running uh in the seat that is being vacated by Paul Espinosa, and I'm really looking forward to it. Barbara, have you been stung by any bees this summer, though, is the real question. Um, well, sadly, um, I'm allergic, um, but I do have them all around my house, so when I leave, I hit the door running. <laughs> you got to be careful. <laughs> Smart lady. Now, you were telling me beforehand you got a couple of sick dogs at the house. What's going on? Uh, not really sure. I'm not... Uh, 100 percent sure if they've had um the food that i give them is victor food and i saw that some of their packages were recalled due to salmonella oh. and yeah so when i am done with uh our homeschool co-op today i get to take two dogs to the vet <laughs> well and you've got some big dogs you were telling me huh Yes, I have two St. Bernards who are four, their brother and sister, and I have a German Shepherd puppy uh, that I actually got from my running mate, Tiffany Shepherd. Uh, her dogs uh, had, had puppies, and, and I got one of them, and he's just an absolute crazy dog. <laughs> <laughs> and he's a quote-unquote puppy, correct? I think you were telling me he's about 100 pounds. Yeah, he is um, eight months old, and he's just about 100 pounds. That's, Wait, a, that's a big puppy. When yeah. you take him for a walk, Barbara, you take him on a leash, I can imagine those three big dogs going in different directions <laughs> and you trying to hold them all back. So I can't walk the puppy um, with the saints because he has no manners. <laughs> um, but my... But my saints are so laid back. Like, if I walk the puppy, the leash is, is taut, and I'm literally being dragged down the road. Um, when I walk the uh, the saints, I literally, they, I can relax the leash. They walk right next to me. They don't pull. They, they're they just, they're wonderful. They're saints. <laughs> they're saints. <laughs> yeah. uh, Barbara, let's talk yes, about you. Could you give us uh, some idea of your background and, and what has led you to this point of ultimately running for office? That is such a loaded question. So as you know, um, I ran for Board of, Ed um, Board of Education in the last, um, the, the last elections. Um, I didn't make it. I stepped back. I reevaluated my entire life and what I was doing, and I, I went back to school. So I am a full-time student at Liberty University uh, studying law and policy with a concentration in constitutional law. The end game is, is that I'm going to uh, live up to the promise that I made to my dad many, many, many years ago um, of going to law school and getting my law degree. So uh, that's what I'm doing. Congratulations. Then, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I sometimes I, I wonder how I come up with these things. Um, so while I'm running, I'm going to be finishing up my senior year um, for my major and studying for LSATs all while campaigning so that should just you know th that that should be fun to watch uh, i'm actually looking forward to it because I, I think it will be absolutely insane well, make sure um, you check with alonzo perry on on what their <laughs> the answers are good and which the answers are bad there he just took that yeah i know and it's funny because uh, i was at the uh the dinner with him on saturday and i'm like so how bad was it and he's like uh study <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. Bill Stubblefield. Yeah, uh, congratulations, Barbara, uh, on several things. Congratulations going back to school and a law degree, uh, pursuing a law degree. Where, which law school would you do you hope to go to? Well, so since I am kind of stuck in what 
Jefferson County because my husband is here and my kids are here and I can't just run off and go to WVU or anything else. I was thinking of uh, the Anton Scalia Law School, and I, I figured, you know, the, the name is there. Um, it, I would have to probably attend anything that was over uh in the D.C. area, Maryland, you know, over there, uh, just because of the fact that I can't just up and leave my family mm -hmm. for, you know, three years. <laughs> well, it's a it's a tough haul. Uh, going to school, uh, graduate school anyway is tough, but were they trying to keep a profession, family going is even tougher. So mm -hmm. I commend you for what you're trying to do. Uh, oh, thank you. Yeah. Now, you're, you're from an Air Force family, or your husband's Air Force, retired Air Force. My is that husband correct? is retired Air mm -hmm. Force, yes. And you travel quite a bit as Air Force family? Um, well, so I was his second wife, and I hate to say it like that, but um, so when I met him, I was living in the Bronx, and the only duty station that I had the opportunity, he's been all over the place, uh, the only uh, duty station that I had the opportunity to go to was, um, he was stationed at uh, Cheyenne Mountain, um, and we were there for almost five years. So it was nice. Yeah. It was different. <laughs> what, yeah. What made you jump from uh, Board of Education, uh, pursuing Board of Education, to pursuing a, pursuing a delegate seat? I'm glad you asked. Um, so while I was in school, I had no intention for running for anything. But because I am in studying, my concentration is constitutional law, I had a lot of assignments that required me to follow the legislature of West Virginia, and so that's what I was doing. So while I was following it, I just became completely dismayed. I was, I've been watching, and I've been digesting, and just this past year, I was disappointed. Um, I saw millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars being given to to form energy, which is just, we have issues that we need to take care of at home, um, and giving money to them just didn't seem the smart solution. Um, so um, when they gave all that money to them, I said to myself, I said, there's no way that they're going to uh, – hire anybody from West Virginia, not where they're located. And all we heard was that this is going to be good for West Virginia. We have jobs. This is what we're going to do. And I've, you know, I gave everybody the benefit of the doubt and I've been following them. And when I go onto their websites now, I see that they're hiring for Pennsylvania and Ohio. And to me, I don't think that they're going to come in and offer any jobs in West Virginia. They're, they talk about sending those people from Pennsylvania and Ohio to West Virginia. That's yeah. not a benefit to okay. West Virginians. And I'm sure everybody could see that coming, except for our legislators. Well, you obviously have a a passion about running. Uh, you've had you have some support uh, within the Republican Party. Uh, you want to mention some of the names, uh, some of the individuals that have endorsed you? Um, well, I I have some support. I know uh, I Marshall Wilson has endorsed me, um, and I'm not really sure who else has. Okay. Now, there's kind of a uh, uh, a fracture within the Republican Party within Jefferson County. It seems to be kind of a uh, Patricia Rucker uh, division and a Paul Espinosa division. Uh, which part? Which side do you do you feel yourself more comfortable? Well, the division isn't necessarily them. Um, the division has been happening s since my Board of Education run. Um, and uh, I don't really think that I fall within either one of them. I do feel that Patricia is more conservative. Um, and, you know, but Paul has had conservative votes as well. So that being said, I don't really think I can align with anybody. I am 
I always tell people that I am a conservative more than a Republican, and anybody who says that is who I will align with. <laughs> Fair enough. Good. Matt Miller. Barbara, you ran earlier, as you mentioned, for the Board of Education. So are those education issues key on your mind as you make this run now for delegate? Oh, they certainly are. Um, that uh, That is actually a great question. So um, one of the things that I want to do is to make sure that our teachers, and, and it's not just our teachers, it's all of our um, our our workers, so our teachers, our police, and our the uh, the I just lost it. Um, corrections officers. Um, I think that they need to uh, to have a better pay, locality pay, and that's something that I've always fought for when I ran for board of education. Um, I think that we need to uh, abolish the Common Core, even though that's not what it's called now. It still is. Um, we need to take the control away from our State Board of Education and give it to our localities, because what's good for us here in the Eastern Panhandle is not necessarily what's good for those that are down in the southern part of the state. And I think that that is, that is a huge problem in West Virginia when there's such diverse populations. When you look at the legislature as it is right now, and uh, as you mentioned earlier, uh, for your studies, kind of following the things that are going on, do you believe that there is good support for uh, those ideas that you would bring? So I know that there are... Uh, quite a few uh, conservatives like myself, um, and we, we are all facing the same, uh, the same backlash because of, you know, some of us will never sell out. And I hate to use that word, but sometimes when I look at some of these bills, I, I shake my head and, and I can't think of anything other than, wow, what a sellout. But I digress. Um, I think that that we have uh, a lot of our uh, delegates and our, our legislature is tied to the teachers' union, and that will be a huge fight. But it's something that I'm willing to fight for because I believe in it. I believe in all of our our West Virginia people. I believe in our children, and that's the thing. We can't have a prosperous West Virginia if all of our families and our children are leaving. And that is what my goal is. My goal is to keep our people here. But as my a, kids are leaving. Yes. So it, I, I and it's and it's it's selfishness on my own part because none of my kids want to stay here. But uh, the problem with the children leaving, it goes far beyond the State Board of Education. Uh, we, we have problems across the board. How would you address this myriad, the multitude problems that we have with education? Well, well, with education, so not everybody needs to go to college, and we all know that. So I think that we need to stress the fact that, you know, college isn't for everybody, uh, but we do need trades. Our trades are dying. We need to stress the fact that, that you know, you can, you can go to trade school and not owe and be making by the time that you finish your, your courses. Um, we need to be able to make sure that our kids actually learn in school. I, I think that I've, I've used the example of my own daughter quite often that she was failing, failing horribly. And I asked for her to be left back, and they told me no. And they let her catch up on her classes, and she was then failing again for senior year. And I said, leave her back, don't let her graduate. And instead, my 17-year-old daughter was given the opportunity to take a test and if she passed, she could graduate. And this, to me, is, is just the wrong way to handle it. 
if a parent is coming to you wholeheartedly saying, my daughter or my son is not learning, is not grasping, I want you to leave them back and then you go and do completely the opposite, that, that doesn't help our future. That creates children or young adults who are not able to function in society. Barbara, is the issue at the local Board of Ed level or is it at the state Board of Ed level? Well, right now I would say my issue is at the local, but the locals are dictated by the state. So, you know, it all trickles down. So if the locals are, are the local Board of Educations are not functioning properly or whatever, you've got to be able to go to the state. Well, you know, those are incestuous as well. And, you know, what they say, you know, when one person, you know, has an issue, well, I know this person, so he'll they'll just make it go away. And we need to have – we need to be able to stop that is really what we need to do. The voters were given a chance to give the legislature oversight of the State Board of Education and rejected it. With that being the case, what can a legislature legislator do about the State Board of Education? So I think that the problem with that, and I've, I've spoken with quite a few legislators in reference to this, um, the issue at hand was not that they didn't want the legislature to have control. They literally had four constitutional amendments all together, not separate, and people became confused. Which one is which? Which one is, you know, which one do I want to vote for? Um, and I think that what happened was that people knew that one, one or two of the constitutional amendments was not something that they would be in favor of, but they couldn't remember which one was which, so they just voted no on all of them. And I've had quite a few people who told me that, and I'm like, oh, didn't you read them? Oh, well, you know, I was busy, and I couldn't, you know, I, I went in to early voting, and there's not enough, you know, I, you know, there was a line, and I just, I felt rushed. And, and if you're going to do a constitutional amendment, you can't jam four of them down at one time. You just can't. I think that part is true. It also is disappointing in the electorate when you have four meaty issues like that that you wouldn't take time to read them and understand them and vote on them. Oh, and, and it, it wasn't for lack of the legislators trying either because they had, you know, Facebook posts explaining it. And, of course, there was, there was you know, the, the commentary back and forth. And I think that instead of, um, leaving it open for comment, it should have been, you know, on Facebook that, or wherever you're going to put it on your web page, that you put down exactly what the issue is, what you're voting for, and don't leave it open for comment because you have people who were like, that's not what that's about. I was told it was this. So and so told me this is what it was about. So, it, it, it isn't a help when you have other people commenting back and forth. Barbara, I want to ask you about the state's finances. As a delegate, of course, you'll be asked to vote on that. The legislature signed by the governor passed a tax cut recently. Uh, that tax cut uh, could, in fact, trigger additional tax cuts, too. Uh, while that's going on, uh, the foster care situation in the state and DHHR, uh, by most people's uh, evaluations, is failing the state and failing the children of the state. Can we afford more tax cuts in West Virginia before the foster care situation is fixed in West Virginia? So right off, I would say no. However, with the excess that we have, uh, that would have been also a great place to put the 100 or the $300 million that went to form. So we still have an excess, and that should be addressed. Um, I don't know if you are aware, I am adopted, and uh, foster care, uh, that whole 
area is something that I'm 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 very passionate about. I've heard uh, horror stories. I've heard um, on both sides of of the fence. I've heard of, of parents who had lost their children uh, for whatever reason and they were then adopted out. I have uh, heard from foster parents who um, were taking very good care of children and, you know, and for whatever reason, those children were removed because of, you know, a conflict of interest uh, between, you know, DHHR and, and the foster parent. Uh, the entire thing needs to be overhauled, and without you know throwing people under the bus, it it starts with our our judicial and our judges, and and how they handle uh, those foster care cases, all the way to DHHR and and even rehabilitating parents so that their children are not removed from them. Have you had the uh, upper- because, I'm sorry. Continue. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, have uh, you had the opportunity to review the DHHR split that's uh, going to take place soon? No, I I actually have not. Um, I've been I kind of overloaded uh, my courses this summer, um, so because I knew that I was going to be running, so I've kind of taken a break from looking at anything that has been going on there, mm-hmm. and you know, and paying attention to to law. And, and fun things like that, but uh, I'm about to finish up that, and then I'll be able to dig in within the next couple of weeks and see what's what's been going on. Barbara, we're just about out of time. I've enjoyed our conversation with you this morning. Uh, final minute is yours, whatever you'd like to say. Oh, well, um, thank you. Uh, so as I, I was saying, uh, for me, my main reason for running is that I want our future generations to prosper and remain in West Virginia. We can only achieve this by promoting West Virginia business, which I'm very, very passionate about, tourism, coal, and gas. We won't achieve this if our our local delegation is giving away everything and nothing to show for it. Um, I just also noticed that there's the new Freedom Caucus, and I'm excited to see what's going to happen with that. And if I'm elected, I hope that they uh, ask me to to join. And uh, if anybody has any questions, uh, my webpage should be up within the next week or two. And I'm always open to commentary and questions, and I look forward to uh, serving. And good luck to you on your LSATs. Oh, thanks so much. And the dogs, too. Yes, and the dogs. (laughs) The dogs. (laughs) The dogs. Have a great day.